design in 2006, um, just after AOL disclosed the search logs of many of the, its users. And um, well, this reveals that our search logs reveal, contain more information than we actually believe. And <coughs> Also, it shows that even anonymized search logs are not that anonymized. You can learn a lot about someone. You can even uh, recover the identity of someone just based on its search logs. And it's even true today. I mean, um, when you read Google privacy policies and how they anonymize search logs after ni nine months or 18 months, you don't really know what kind of information they can retrieve just based on your search logs. And uh, uh, there are even some piece of aggregated logs that they could even share uh, according to their privacy policy. So they, uh, aggregated, they define aggregated information as uh, information that does not identify you um, or uh, does not reflect uh, an individual, uh, identifiable individually person. Um, so the idea with TrackMinute was to provide a simple solution. I know we can use Tor to just make search anonymously on the web, on Google, on any search engine. But the thing is with Tor, um, no one, well, not everyone can use Tor. Uh, some of us can, and uh, it's a great tool, but not everyone is able uh, to, to use Tor to search appropriately. Also, uh, even if Tor is well configured, you have to use it uh, in an incorrect way. Um, for instance, r recently, um, there is some uh, lab lab uh, search lab in France who made an experiment and they run a Tor exit node, and 46% uh, of, uh, of the person uh, running uh, through their exit nodes were logged into Google when they made search on Google. So um, it reveals that even if you're configured Tor correctly, it's not sure that you'll really be anonymous. You have to, well, most of the user may not really um, configure it appropriately. And also, uh, the idea was to send a signal to search engines um, because when you're anonymous, uh, you cannot be counted, actually. Google has no idea that many uh, users um, actually do not like their privacy policy and try to go through Tor. When you're, when you're using Tor, you cannot be counted and um, the idea was to send a signal uh, that can be seen by search engines. And um, so there is no such thing as an, an opt-out for uh, Google search. And uh, by the way, um, when you opt out from something like advertising uh, targeting, you just opt out from ad advertising. Uh, you're not opt op uh, opting out from tracking. So, <clears throat> so the idea was to uh, use web search obfuscation. We'll just create nodes uh, in your search history so that the search engine will not be able to really uh, interpret your search. And we'll have to, uh, well, try to filter some track minute queries to really find what uh, you're interested in. Um, so the idea is that no one should be sure that a query in your search history has been generated by you. So let's take an example. Um, either you're a search engine, uh, you're someone which uh, have access to Wi-Fi networks of your neighbors and you, want, and you see all the queries that, that go through the Wi-Fi networks. And when you see a query, you can assume that the user issued the query, that it reveals something about him. Um, well, ideally with TrackMinute, normally you should not be able to do such thing. Uh, when, the, when you see a query, you can no longer assume, assume that it has been made by the user. You have to also uh, admit the possibility that maybe TrackMinute generated the query and not the user itself, himself. So whether you're a search engine or just someone wiretyping wire typing on Wi-Fi networks or both, um, normally you should not be able to um, be sure that someone made a query and be sure that someone is interested in something. <clears throat> so that's what we'd like to call a reasonable doubt. We'd like uh, to have a property where uh, for any query in your search history, the search, search engine should uh, not be able to be sure that you made the query. There sh should be a non-negligible uh, probability that track me not issued the query. So uh, normally if I know someone is using track me not, um, I should not be able to, 
really be sure that uh, the query is, is made by, uh, by him. But the thing is, what if I don't know who's using track me not? Um, how can I then uh, know who's using it and uh, what, which, which part of the queries that are re received in my logs I are actually made by, by, the, by users? So that's the point that normally if track me not is not detectable, you, you have to assume that everyone is using it. Well, that is um, an, un, um, an undefined pr uh, proportion of people are using it. You cannot know the probability for a user to use it. And if you receive uh, some query in your search logs, you have to believe that maybe the user is using track me not, and if he's using track me not, maybe this query has been generated by track me not. <coughs> Am I clear at this point? So the first version of track me not uh, has been published in 2006, and it was just like proof of concept um, to prove that this approach may work, that anonymity was not a sole solution to uh, have some privacy when we are doing search on internet. So uh, to provide some technical details, query are just submitted with uh, XML HTTP request. Um, uh, we used a fixed of, uh, set of keywords to generate queries. So we use a dictionary, uh, um, I think about 1,500 words. And so the search engine uh, could easily filter the queries that were not made by track me not and detect them. Also query were made at a fixed schedule. Um, so it was not too hard for search engine to identify the uh, query made by track me not, but at this time, it was just like a proof of concept to prove that uh, this approach may, may, might, might work. <coughs> so uh, this approach, has, well, track me not as a, as the first version has been widely criticized uh, for the reason that uh, I gave early. And uh, so from these critics, we try to improve track me not to make it more robust and uh, more uh, harder, to de harder to detect. So the first thing that we've made is that uh, we use a dynamic query list. Now, when someone is making is using track me not, normally when track me not make a search on Google or on AOL, being track me not will parse the search results and extract some keywords. It will use these keywords in the next queries. So uh, the the list of queries will will evolve, and uh, this set of um, this process is fully randomized. So normally, um, two users should not have the same set of queries after like a week. And a search engine should not be able to filter easily queries made by track me not. Uh, another, thing that, another thing that um, we've done is that we use now RSS feeds. So when the user uh, is running track me not, you can configure a set of RSS feeds that will be used to extract keywords. So when track me not is, uh, is running, it will d uh, get the, the feeds. Uh, parse them and um, extract some keywords. So the idea is that normally user should be able to select um, a set of uh, feeds that are related to a topic and simulate some interest for that topic. So for example, let's assume you're not interested by car, but want to simulate to uh, have Google believing that you're interested by car. You, you just find some RSS feed which speak only about cars and um, that uh, and then uh, gets these feeds and send query only related to by, uh, about car to Google. You can do the same thing for sports, IT. Uh, if you find some uh, website publishing a feed and uh, you can and you want to simulate an address for uh, this website, you just have to uh, add it to track me not. Also, um, you probably know that search engine gives suggestion to users. When you're typing something on Google, on Yahoo, you're receiving a, a set of uh, search, uh, search terms that uh, are suggested. And normally, some, well, at some point, you can click on them. And so uh, we try to have them also integrated in TrackMeNote. So in the same way that you can click on search suggestion, uh, TrackMeNote also will simulate click on, the, on these suggestions. Uh, we also change the way we schedule queries. It's not uh, a fixed interval time now. Uh, you can configure, configure it, and uh, it's randomized also. You can just set the frequency, and track me not will um, uh, set, set, uh, uh, send the query at an average frequency, and the process is randomized. So normally, search engine should not be able to filter the queries just based on timestamps. Um. 
Also, there is a query burst. When TrackMinute detects that some user is uh, searching on a search engine, uh, it will send a set of query um, to hide the r real user search. And the uh, additional feature is that now we use also dynamic uh, URLs. So for example, if uh, I'm searching on Google Friends, uh, the URL is not the same, and TrackMinute will map that. And also, we're clicking on some um, search results. So uh, if you, because users also um, click on some, on some results when, uh, when they get search results, and the idea is to try really to mimic all the habit of the user. Um, at any granularity. The sort of things that we do not do and intentionally, it's we do not click on sponsored results um, because we, do not, we do not want to click on ads. It's, it, will, it will be assimilated to some sort of click fraud. So, and um, actually also when track not simulate a click on a search link, on, on search results, uh, it never loads the contents of the uh, search results. It stops uh, the connection before. So the, so the browser will never load untrusted content. Uh, we also changed the way we submit queries to search engines. Initially, we were using just XML HTTP requests, uh, downloading the HTML content and parsing it. Uh, but now search engines contain pictures, feeds, uh, tweets, JavaScripts that are run in the browser. So if, you, if we just... Um, uh, download that without running the JavaScript with with um, with a browser. Uh, the, the search engine might be able to detect uh, which queries are submitted by TrackMinot. Uh, so the idea was that we load the search page in a, in an iframe, uh, in such a way that the search engine normally uh, will send all the contents to the iframe as uh, it will do to the browser normally. And uh, also, we simulate keystroke um, in the search bar, so uh, so you, you will receive the suggestions, and the search engine uh, should not be able, just based on the server logs on the suggest service, to be able to filter track me not queries. We're also downloading the small icon that appears uh, along the, the URL bar normally, um, which, for example, for Google is a G, and um, so normally, uh, search engine also um, is not able to filter track minute queries based on that. And um, the problem with iframe is that it can be easily detected by a search engine. Um, so what uh, we change uh, this to use a browser element in Firefox, uh, which is exactly like a browser that you used. Um, and uh, it's not no normally it's not visible to the users, but uh, it still uh, acts exactly as a visible browser. And the advantage is that also it records uh, all the search that m are made by TrackMinutes in your browser history. So uh, normally it colors the links uh, that TrackMinute clicks on in the same way as uh, if you really search for them. So uh, all the ad, uh, history st stealing attack based on link coloration should not work uh, well or sh should be mitigated um, uh, through this approach. And uh, yeah, click and, um, and keystrokes are sent to, through DOM events. So we are just um, sending all the events to uh, the uh, search engine page. And normally it's, uh, it's more robust, so if the search engine change something in, uh, in the JavaScript or in the interface, uh, normally it should, uh, track minute should still run. Uh, I just, will just try to make a sh short demo. So, um, uh, well, normally this is hidden, uh, you don't see it, and that's, um, well, track me not process running, and you can see that it's typing uh, like uh, I will normally, and it receives suggestion, at some point it will also click on some suggestions. Um, so these are just the keystrokes events that are sent to uh, Google. And uh, if, uh, if um, it simulates several, key uh, several search with uh, common keywords, it, it will just, <laughs> well, any kind of query might be generated. Um, 
and so it will try to just remove some um, some some uh, some terms from the search. Um, well, actually not. We're not monitoring. Well, ideally, uh, I will come to that point later, but we would like to be able to um, monitor how fast the users type on the keyboard or uh, how he mo uh, moves the mouse on the search page. Um, for currently, it's not uh, implemented. We would like to have something like that to just be able to uh, really mimic users' habits. Uh, also, we, don't, we do not know at which granularity uh, search engines are able to uh, monitor these kind of events. Uh, yeah, it's not implemented yet. Also, um, and we'll, well, it's not um, s same things. We'll like to be able to monitor that and see when the, um, uh, how often the user click on did you mean when you received uh, the search results. Uh, well, um, <laughs> No, th so far no. The, s the sole solution to really control. Uh, so the question is: Are there words that are uh, excluded intentionally um, that could give you trouble? Uh, and th the answer is currently no. Um, normally, if you configure the set of RSS feeds, uh, it should um, uh, it should allow you to give some direction to the set of keywords that are used. Um, but we would like to have something also allowing users to because uh, when the set of keywords change, we we lose the control about how they change and which are the keywords that are used. Uh, we'll have to have some tools to let users filter keywords so they can use basically track me not when they're working uh, from their office. Uh, normally, you can set the frequency, so... Um, uh, yeah, so... Um, you can set the set of you can set the frequency ten per minute, ten uh, five per minute, and you can change that. And it's not exactly a set, well. It's not if you set ten per minute, it's, it won't be like one every six seconds. It will be more or less like five and then seven seconds later, and it will uh, be like that. Yeah. So it's 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 randomized. We we try to keep the the frequency and. Uh, normally, and also if the, you use a burst option, uh, normally it will um, send burst after it detects uh, user queries. So as the search engine is not able to know when the user made a queries, it will not be able to detect burst. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, they're recorded. So far, we just uh, currently remo remove them to not pollute too much uh, browser history. It's, uh, we, we can remove that and uh, let them in the browser history. Uh, yes? Um, well, it's under development. Uh, actually, we have some prototype. We do that, uh, which does that. Uh, I will come to that later. And uh, but we, uh, we are we are thinking about that also. Okay, second, second oh, sorry. So that was a previous question. And well, except from uh, setting the RSS feeds about a particular topic, there is no such thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, well, we actually we 
we're using we're using RSS feed. So normally what we do is that we just take uh, in the RSS feed the title of the news and uh, then remove all the, the words that, are that, that do not start by a capital letters. We try to assume that normally uh, words starting with capital letters are no stop words. Um, well, probably we will have to have a list of stop words implemented. But the thing is that if we start to use a list of stop words, we will have to have a different list for um, every language. So. Okay, so um, uh, that was a version on Firefox. Uh, well, recently, this, this week actually, we started to have a ver version of Chrome, which is quite basic now, because we don't have the same API on Chrome than we have on Firefox. Um, it's just started, the development started like last week, and um, uh, you can download it from the website. So if, I don't know if you have, uh, if some of you have some experience with Chrome uh, extension development. Uh, the thing is actually you have a background HTML page, uh, which is pr uh, specific to every extension. And what we do is that we just create an iframe. So it's still an iframe, it's not uh, as good as with Firefox. And uh, we set the, your search, uh, the source of the iframe to the search page. Then what we do is, well, set the current uh, implementation. And that uh, next step it will be to inject a content script uh, in this uh, iframe to interact with a um, search bar and also simulate click on uh, some uh, search results. Uh, so these are the versions that of track minutes that uh, are developed now. We have um, the version of Firefox, which is the more complete. Um, uh, so it runs with in a browser, not in an iframe. Um, we also um, have a version for Chrome, and uh, Safari also have a s extension system now, which is quite similar to the one of, to the exten uh, extension system of Chrome. And um, so for uh, Internet Explorer, we just have an iframe uh, which loads the content. We have no possibility to load um, some content scripts uh, in the iframe due uh, to some security restriction. Uh, the search engine, then uh, you can search on, um, uh, uh, you can search on AOL, Beidou, Bing, um, uh, Google, and Yahoo. And uh, if you search on uh, Beidou, the thing is that you can also use uh, Chinese RSS feeds, so it will uh, type Chinese characters, um, actually. Here, uh, I don't know if it's clear on the uh, capture s screenshot on the right. Um, it's search on Beidou and it's uh, typing Chinese characters. So you just have to um, s configure track minute to use Chinese RSS feeds and be sure that uh, it's only have uh, Chinese characters and normally it should, it should work. So um, what we're also uh, um, trying to bring uh, as features now. Um, we we'll like, so uh, it's related to the questions that you had, we we'll, would like to really simulate uh, the uh, user behavior. So time distribution, if you're searching more during the weekend or if you're not searching between uh, uh, 6 and 7 a.m., uh, track minute will not search between 6 and 7 a.m. And if you're uh, searching twice during the weekend and that's what you're doing during the week, uh, track minute will search in the same way. Also, if uh, you're almost always searching on Bing and never on Google. So proportionality should be the, should be the same for track minute search and for uh, you, your own search. So uh, syntax would like to get some um, syntax feature, uh, like how many quotes the user type in, uh, does he ever type capital letters, does he make, type, uh, does he make typos? And there are uh, some search engine specific uh, syntax. For example, if you ever uh, search with in URL or file type or site in Google, uh, track minute does, do, uh, does not uh, search like that yet. And we would like to be able to uh, also have this kind of uh, element included in track minute. The number of suggestions accepted by the user, I uh, have the same thing uh, with track minute. Uh, how many search sessions the user um, uh, have, uh, well, 
uh, by search session, I mean uh, when you have two consecutive search with similar terms or uh, s terms related to the same topic. How often does that, does that occur? And uh, when you have a search session, how long do, uh, does it last on average? And also, um, we'd like to know what the, what the profile uh, a search engine uh, has about you. So I don't know if you heard about Google Dashboard. Uh, basically, they, they give you raw data about well all the services that you use from Google, like uh, Gmail, uh, Google Search, and all the all the data that they, they have. You, you can um, uh, see see them on the services. But uh, the thing is that it's only raw data. Uh, it's not interpreted data. They, they, you, you have no access to the profiles that they build from this data. And the thing is, um, for example, Google is able to know if someone has, uh, has the flu before uh, the user it's himself. Uh, they just can do that based on the uh, s search, term, search terms. If you're looking for uh, the flu symptoms, it's likely that you have the flu. And a user by uh, alone cannot uh, infer that from his own searches. So we'd like to have something that will let the user uh, have some, um, some insight about, uh, about his profile. And we're also looking for other, uh, other source of keywords uh, to have some things that you can use from your office uh, and that uh, will not use inappropriate terms. And uh, we are adding search engines like uh, the uh, uh, HTTPS version of Google, and uh, we'd like to add also Scholar. Uh, so the big question is, does it work? Um, well, we have some reason to believe that it actually works. Uh, when we s look for uh, the kind of countermeasures that might be deployed by search engine, uh, some paper published by uh, people from Microsoft suggests that uh, the kind of features they use to identify search bots are the the, um, based on the query. So uh, most of the time the queries contain spam, spam words or refer to adult contents, or if the queries use uh, very frequently the same, time, the same set of keywords. If the user is, well, if uh, the search engine receives too many queries from uh, a browser, we, ca we can assume that the browser is actually running uh, some search, some uh, search bots. Uh, some uh, bots just aim at increasing the page rank of a pa of some page, so they will click always on the same link to have the page rank of this page uh, increase. And if uh, this page is too far, they will have to click frequently on next. Uh, so these are the kind of features that uh, are used by search engines to um, de detect obvious search bots. Uh, they, they might be other. Uh, this, is, well, uh, I, I put a reference here. The paper has been published in 2008, so they might, they may, they may have a more elaborated uh, mechanism now. And uh, when we look at uh, how track minutes behave compared to these features, when we when we look at these features. Uh, well, normally it should not be detected by um, by um, the, the search engines or by this filter. Also, Yahoo allow you to uh, check your search profile, so you can go on this page and uh, you will see your search profiles. Um, well, I'm not interested in cars or country or role-playing games, so all these uh, interests are actually simulated by TrackMinot. And we wanted to be sure that TrackMinot can actually impact uh, user search profile. So we run an experiment with 10 uh, empty search profile. And uh, we generated queries about different topics with these profiles and uh, tried to see um, if uh, the, quer the search profile were, was impacted by um, these queries. And so we, we had some results where um, the profile are, are actually impacted. Um, normally, if you try to uh, um, search about a certain topic with track me not, um, the search engine will uh, modify your profile, but will not um, consider all the categories that are, uh, leaded, uh, that are connected to this topic. And also, it will add some uh, categories that are not connected to the, track, uh, the topic that track me not is um, searching about. Uh, so why could, it, uh, could track not, uh, not be working? Uh, well, the default configuration is the same for every user, so it will take some time to evolve. Uh, actually, users, uh, if they change the default configuration, it um, will have different set of keywords, but um, it, 
well, the default matters, so um, uh, we, we have to s find some way to improve that. Um, also, search engine can detect colorations about thousands of users. Uh, we're not able to do that. We, don't add, we do not have access to all these profiles. Um, I think th last week, um, uh, some research paper from uh, Yahoo has been slash dotted, and they, they, w what they did is that they correlate um, search queries with uh, demographic data. And they find that there are some uh, some queries that are really characteristic of a certain kind of population. For example, um, well, uh, if you are searching for a Radeon um, X800, uh, you're probably um, a male. And uh, so, is, uh, if you're lo looking for, uh, I think it's uh, Jay Shu song lyrics, uh, you're probably uh, originating from Asia. And all these kind of things that um, search engine can infer from uh, this huge amount of data they have, we, we cannot uh, uh, have that. Uh, what? Um, I think it's search, demo uh, search demographics. Um, um, I don't really have uh, the name. I, c I can find it later. Um, and also, TrackMinute cannot hide your identity. So if you search for your own name uh, on Google, we will, well, probably it will appear as um, as different of, uh, from the track minute searches. The thing is, um, at some point, we'll, we had a features which generated uh, some sort of uh, social security number, so that it will submit uh, th this security uh, social security numbers to uh, search engines. And uh, but we, we did not uh, uh, develop develop that uh, anymore, and maybe we, we will. Also, uh, TrackMinute does not let you delete search in, your, in the search engine search logs. Um, the thing is, uh, when I run TrackMinute for a long time, um, my very old queries are deleted from my uh, Google search profile. And uh, these are not only the uh, query generated by TrackMinute, but all um, my uh, search uh, are deleted by Google. Um, but uh, it's, it probably stays in the search logs. And so actually, um, well, the answer is uh, it depends. So it depends on what exactly uh, work mean. Do we want track not to be indetectable? Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, we would like to have uh, track not being able to, um, well, we would like to have the search engine consider that may maybe every user is using track not. Uh, if that's the case, as soon as track not is detec detected by a search engine, as soon as its use is, is detected, uh, well, we can consider that we failed. Um, so is that a case of failure? Uh, what if 99% of tracking net queries can be flagged by a search engine? Uh, should we consider that it's still working? There, I mean, there is still 1%. Uh, well, probably not. But what if 50% of my queries, my own search queries, are also flagged and deleted by the, uh, in the search logs? Actually, there, um, there is a paper uh, which use ma uh, machine learning algorithm to try to filter uh, track minute queries, and on average, um, they deleted like 50% of um, uh, user queries, but uh, being able to remove like 99.9% .9 of um, track minute queries. Well, it was on default configuration and on a previous version of track minute, but still, and um, well, Normally, for uh, a spam filter, if it detects 99% uh, of spam but uh, deletes 50% of your uh, real search, uh, real message, real email, sorry, uh, well, we consider that it's not working. But the thing is, uh, well, what if a search engine dropped 90% of my queries but is still able to profile me quite accurately? Um, maybe, I maybe I want to add my profile. I'm not interested in the search engine just deleting uh, some specific search queries. Um, and uh, so one of our objectives was, was to make it harder for search engine to f uh, read user logs. And the question is, uh, what should be the cost for a search engine? How many uh, what ratio of queries should it drop to uh, be able to uh, get some information? If well, as I say, if it, dr it drops 90%, uh, should we consider, well, that we succeed at some point? 
And do we want to make the profile unreadable, generate noise and queries uh, without uh, a specific targets and about any topic? So at this point, uh, well, the search engine won't be able to infer anything from uh, our search logs, or do we want to be able to modify the search, en the search engine, uh, the search profile based uh, on track on track minute search? And uh, well, do we r really want to have any kind of query um, s sent by track minutes? Uh, if we want to have something like uh, allowing a a any every user to uh, say that its own query has been generated by track minutes, even if it's not using track minutes, we, we would like to have any uh, potential uh, search uh, being generated by track minutes. And uh, if not, uh, well, uh, does this, should the query made by track minutes sim uh, be similar only to your queries? That's more realistic, but um, so, um, well, we have all this question and we would like to have uh, your feedback. So uh, we have, uh, we're building community on get satisfaction. Uh, the URL is here, getsatisfaction.com slash track minutes. And um, so we're open to feedback. If you have any feedback like uh, even saying that this kind of query are generated by track minute and they are not realist realistic, uh, so we could add some uh, regular expression to filter them. Um, if uh, you would like uh, to, if you would like to have track minute being um, able to have some additional features, uh, you can suggest it. Um, uh, also, if you if there are some critics about track minutes that uh, you want to formulate, it's, this is a kind of suggestion and. Um, well, this uh, track minute also evolved based on uh, critics. And uh, if you have any uh, attack scheme that you want to try on track minute, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, we don't have uh, any set of data, so we cannot test uh, track minutes on uh, user data, see if uh, track minute queries are different of user uh, queries. Um, but if you want to do that on your own queries, or um, I could even give a set of uh, my own search logs um, uh, if you want to try to train some uh, mechanism to detect track minute queries or uh, if you see that there is something in the, um, uh, at the network level which differentiate track minute search from uh, user search. And uh, so this is a website, uh, URL of the website and if you have any question. Um, it detects, uh, well, actually it's based on the URL, so there is a, a regular expression which detects the URL. Um, normally it's the URL of the search, so uh, as soon as you made a search, normally it will uh, trigger a burst. Okay, so it's, the burst is triggered after you get the URL back that you searched something, right? Yeah. So essentially then the first search before the burst will always be the user's search. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's why we have also the frequency, which, well, we have both the frequency and the, um, the burst mode. Normally, it will generate uh, search uh, at uh, a given frequency, and um, we're not sure the search engine uh, will be able to know if uh, which exactly is the search that triggered the burst. So, yeah, if you set the frequency like one every hour, uh, and then you have uh, a s user search in the middle of the hour, it's, it, it won't work. Uh, yes? Yeah, normally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, I, I don't know exactly how Google sharing works. I think it, uh, it's based on the URL. It, 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 it must redirect as, um, the traffic through the Google sharing proxies. So normally I think it, it, it also works with uh, Google sharing. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Um, so I think it's 20%. So th th the number of queries that are clicked through are 20%. Uh, I will also, as I say, will so uh, like to have something that will monitor the frequency of uh, click through and eventually uh, which is the rank of the page which is clicked on the search results. So if, for example, the user is only clicking on the uh, first uh, search results, I have something like that also in track me nodes. Yes? Uh, can you repeat? I, I didn't. When I use the Firefox plugin for Google, yeah. I know that it's Google, and I just want to make a key to run the search without the other thing. Um, have you guys thought about implementing other things for that way where it's just part of the So, um, yeah, normally it receives suggestion. We, we, we're simulating, uh, well, so that's why um, we, we are simulating keystrokes in the search bar so that it will. T uh, uh, automatically uh, get some suggestion for, from Google and from all the search engine as well. Uh, yes? Um, no. Um, well, actually, currently it, it may not work for an enterprise because we're not able to um, Really well. We, if someone wants to use TrackMinute from its enterprise, it, it's risky because there there are these kind of keywords. Um, um, but the thing is, um, well, as I say, with RSS feed, it should work. Um, I, I don't know if we set uh, TrackMinute on a proxy from an enterprise. How many queries it should generate to be uh, realistic? Probably too much, and maybe it will uh, be flagged. May, maybe not. Um, uh, but, well, it, it might be an interesting, uh, interesting idea. So, yeah. Also, whenever you were talking about how you're currently implementing uh, matching user behavior, so you know, if you do a lot of queries on the weekend, that's when it will really fill in to, to cover you up. What about uh, functionality for the opposite of that? What if you like to mask your your active time and, and balance it out? Well, that's the current mo that's the current mode actually. So that it it will um, currently it, it, yeah, it's it's the uh, fixed uh, frequency and yes. What, what kind of uh, URLs it could be? Uh, on, okay, on, on the, so we'll, you would like to be able to add a custom search engine. Um, well, we actually, to add the search engine, we just have to add some reg uh, regular expression which correspond to the search engine uh, search URL. Um, normally, it's it's not such a big effort to add a single search engine. We just um, it's I think we have to just add some regular expression. If you know the URL and know where the search terms are, it's um, well cur currently it's not possible. Uh, from the option window of track me nuts and maybe we'll make that uh, possible. It's, it's, um, I think it should be, uh, yeah, it shouldn't be too hard. Well, the thing is normally you're making search on Google only when Firefox is open. So um, like that we're able to map um, the, um, the user the user habits. So, um, if uh, user is only have his browser open during the, the weekend, normally it should, it should work, and we won't have to be uh, to monitor the frequency. Um, uh, you can have the browser running in, um, in background and. What? It's not running as a service. 
No, no. It's it's um, well. The thing is, by if, as um, extension run on the browser, we're able to have all the parameter from the browser cookies, uh, all the user agent, and so it's really uh, we're really able to simulate the same sort of of um, parameters than user would. Yes. Could you repeat? I in other words, a Google executive said that if you make four general searches on a blank computer, that they, they can basically identify the computer by the searches you make. In other words, if you're a particular interest that, that they're searching algorithms are smart enough to sort of allocate and sort of uniquely identify your particular searches with, you know, on the URL you're going to be tracking, you know, IP addresses and everything else. My question is, how does tracking Um, well, yeah, yeah, no, it, uh, it, it's clear. Um, so, well, if by any chance tracking not is able to generate these four queries that will identify normally you, um, you can assume that Google will reconnect you with the wrong uh, computer. Um, but uh, as I say, we don't have access to all the data, so we're not able to know exactly what are the uh, queries that are characteristic for some users? What, what, well, what is the signature uh, of uh, the users? Um, uh, I'm not really sure actually that um, we do generate such uh, specific, uh, we, we do some uh, such specific search uh, that often. I, d I don't know, uh, w when you take a look at, at your own uh, search history, most of the time um, this, this is, well, I, I can only speak for my own search history. It's quite generic searches. So, but um, we, we, without having access to uh, all the um, search engine data, we're not able to really answer to that. Okay. Thank you.